he can cook a shoe, and it'll taste delicious. You don't even have to bring your own, he says. And that's neat. It's Tom White. This is Teaching to the Test Pattern. Hey, buddy, thank you so much for downloading this episode of Teaching to the Test Pattern. I'm Tom White, your host for the show. And on this episode, it's part three of my conversation with Andy Blanton from Georgia Tech. He gives us the most important attribute of his crew, talks about what our kids should know, and and how to get them over the fear of messing up. That's one of the things that, that I found that I struggle with with my students is that they're they're scared to mess something up so they don't do anything. So they're paralyzed by fear, and Andy talks about how to get over that and just encourage them through that. Today's podcast is brought to you by Amitrace, A-M-I-T-R-A-C-E.com. And if you go to Amitrace.com right now and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see an article written by Philip Green about getting started with NDI. It tells you how it works. It tells you about the sources. It gives you all kinds of graphics. It talks about problem solving. There's things you can download, how to add NDI to your network, the different recording formats, tech brief. This is for your IT folks, the folks that need the information on how to make sure that your network is is up and going, it's all right there. Amitrace.com, A-M-I-T-R-A-C-E.com. They love education, and they give you solutions like this for free right there on the front page of their website. So go check that out right now. Well, not right now. Right now, finish listening to this episode with Andy Blanton from Georgia Tech. Teaching to the test pattern. So when you're recruiting these people and in, in your full-time staff, your, your freelancers, all that, what is the most important attribute to you? Uh, you know, I think the most important attribute is just, you know, I, I don't want anyone to be complacent. I don't want them to feel like this is not what they want to do. You know, I, I feel like for me, this is a, you know, I don't feel like I go to work every day. I feel like I go somewhere to have fun because I like what I do and I want them to also have that same sort of mentality. So if they're not doing that, then maybe we need to adjust. But uh, so far it's, it's been, you know, really cool. I think from my experience in this industry, um, you know, I, I've never walked uh, into a TV environment where the people who are working in that environment were just not extremely helpful, friendly, and willing to communicate with me and help me. And, and, I feel like that's sort of what I want to foster here too is just this, you know, people are generally just nice in this industry and they're willing to help and troubleshoot and get you all the answers that you need to move your, your situation forward. And I think that's the same thing I want to do with these students. And, and if they desire to be at the next level, then, then I'm going to guide them and try to get them there. You know, you hit on something that, um, that, that I was thinking about on the way up here. Uh, so as a high school teacher, we have imposter syndrome. Matt Sims, <laughs> um, the uh, we're where we fear that what we do isn't good. Mm -hmm. And there's um, several years ago, I went to the college sports summit mm -hmm. here in Atlanta, and I was sitting there as this high school teacher with this imposter syndrome, like I'm just a lowly high school, and um, and, and I look around the table, and I'm there with Harvard, with Emory, and I've got um, BYU, and and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like. These guys are actually talking mm -hmm. to me as though I'm not just this lowly being. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of high school teachers fear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, it, it, it kind of limits them. So uh, that is one thing that I'm glad that you said, because that has been something that's been eye opening for me is the fact that I can call Emory and go, hey, man, mm -hmm. what are you using for comms and how does it work? Right. And, you know, and, and, and I found that across the board. Yep. Um, so. Let's go uh, into into back into high school teaching. Like, mm -hmm. what are things that, as a high school teacher, I should make sure that when my kids come through my program, and if I go, hey, I got a kid that's graduating, he's coming to tech. What are things that that kid should know that would help them as soon as they walk in the door? You go, okay, this kid's got it. Yeah, um, that's a good question, and um, you know, I think a lot of video minded individuals, students especially, you know, you can tell pretty quickly when they get behind a camera if they're you know instinctly shooting the right things or, or just kind of know where the action is going to take them and so I think that that's something that that um, you know can be taught in high school is sort of where to look next to, for the next shot or, or you know thinking about a graphic that's coming up and being able to, to know that um, you know there's just so many things that that you know, we look for and, 
you know, that's, that's, to me, that's the biggest thing is just like the instinct to know how to feed the production. You know, when you're shooting, do you follow and zoom in to the player as he's going to the bench or do you just kind of stay out wide and wander around? You know, it's, to me, it's like fishing and as an operator, you always want the director to call for your shot because the more he does that, that means the better you're doing, right? It's a pat on the back when he's taking your shot over the rest of it. And I like it to be a competition. I really want all of the operators to sort of be fighting to give the best shot at all times. And, and same thing for instant replay. You know, we have to make sure that we're playing the best shot. So we want all of our our kids, our freelancers, our staff to always be sort of selling us the, the best thing. And I think that's sort of what you teach high schoolers to say, you know, don't wait for someone to tell you what to do, you know, feed it to them, sell it to them. That That makes such an easier production when you've got individuals on your crew who have been taught the fundamentals of, hey, if there's a substitution in a basketball game, can you, you know, show that? You want to tell the story, you know, and that's that's something that I think is is crucial to make a really good production is we're just telling the story of what's unfolding in front of us. And there's so many ways to botch that. And, and you know, what you want to teach the children and the high schoolers is to to always be aware that your shot could be the next one and you need to sell it that way so that a director is not having to beg you to pan left pan left pan left zoom in zoom in zoom in you know you should be an extension of his mind and so that that's that's it you know and and a lot of kids have that natural instinct to just kind of know how to do that but some have to be guided a lot more but it can be taught you know one of the biggest things that we're see with it, that we're seeing across the board is that fear of messing up right don't uh, be afraid. Don't be afraid to touch that button. I mean, I don't know what it does. I'm going to I'm going to touch it and see what happens. You know, figure it out and, and 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 play with it. Make sure you know like if I turn this, then that makes it harder to do that. And if I loosen this, it makes it easier to do that. And if I, you know, push this thing forward, it's going to fall forward and we don't want that. So we want to make sure everything's nice and even. But you want to know what everything does so that when you get in a situation like last night, you know, I had a camera guy who's telling me, "Hey, my zoom's not working." Okay, well, have you tried to flip this switch? Well, I don't know where that switch is. Well, you're a camera guy. You should know where that switch is. Uh, so know your equipment and don't be afraid to ask. Um, make sure that, you know, you, you, you can be the, the first line of defense, the first aid in a situation. Well, my headset's not working. Well, have you turned up the volume? Are you sure? <laughs> is it plugged into the right place? Do you know which place to plug it into? Um, you know, again, my Zoom's not working. Well, do you have your speed all the way to slow? Because it's not going to go anywhere if you had to turn it up the fast. In this situation, it wasn't that. It was actually the controller itself had, had kind of gone bad. So we had to swap it out and everything was good. But, you know, to, to know your equipment, know what those buttons do and, and, you know, ask somebody, ask for help, you know, ask for guidance, ask somebody to show you. Uh, I am terrible about teaching people because I will just say, move out of my way. Let me sit down. Let me do it. And I'll, I'll show you. Um, when I know myself, I don't learn like that. I learn when I do it. And if I make a mistake, I will realize that and I will try not to make that mistake again. Um, so, that, you know, practical education is, is a big one for me. You know, get in there and you do it and let's learn from our mistakes. They're not mistakes. They're just teaching moments. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's all right. It's OK. I've seen so many swish pans on ESPN. It's not even funny. It's OK. <laughs> if you, you know, if it happens, just don't let it happen again. Um, but that's it. Just you don't be afraid don't be intimidated by this big thing with lots of lights and buttons on it. You know, ask what they do, press them, see what they do, turn the knob, see what happens. You know, generally we can always just recall the save and we'll be fine. We'll be right back where we were. So one of the things that, um, that those in education, and, and we're seeing this, that there are a lot of teachers who are an English teacher mm-hmm. and they come to work and the, their principal goes, Hey, you're doing video starting now mm. and and we're seeing that and so they'll come and visit my, my background was radio mm-hmm. and they're coming they come and visit and they go you're you talk different when you're doing a live than you do in a classroom that's hard for me to to, to quantify in an education term the, the the tone of a broadcast and a director and making sure mm-hmm. that everything is right while it, it comes across as terse 
it's it's meant in love when, mm-hmm. when those mistakes and, and you know and, and i and i as you were talking about the camera operator envisioned being that camera operator and you're going did you try this did you try this did you try this right. what do you how would you describe what that is as the boss as the top dog and you're here mm-hmm. and you have a camera operator that's in in mccamish just that that I got to tell you, I got to ask you these questions. I'm not fluffing it out. Right. Describe that need, that mentality, so that so that those teachers who are making that conversion can kind of understand that that it's done, not in a mean way, but just to, to get the job done. Yeah. No, you you have to be methodical about how you do that, and, and you have to also think about it yourself. You know, and, and kind of digest it before you extend some instructions on what to look for and and what might be the the cause of the issue. And I think that's you know, ninety percent of my day to day is figuring out issues. You know, figuring out why it worked yesterday and it's not working now, or you know, something has occurred. Did we change out something? So, in my mind, I have to sort of place it all together before I start going. Okay, well, step one is let's look at this. Step two is let's look at that. Step three could be this, and step you know, what could it be that's causing the issues? And let's try to flush through that in a very methodical way of the most likely cause to the most unlikely cause. Uh, so that's it. I mean, it's, it's just basically thinking about it. If I were standing there at that piece of equipment and this was the situation that's presenting itself to me, um, let's, let's verbalize it. Let's talk through. And, and I have to, as the boss, I have to have a mental picture of that whole setup. You know, and we have a lot of different kind of setups for a lot of different things, whether it be where the announcers are sitting, whether it be a camera, whether it be the computer that the graphics person is using 20 minutes before air last night against top five Louisville basketball. My graphics machine forgot that it had video cards in it. (laughs) So that's a moment where you're like, okay, that's never happened before. I don't know exactly what I need to do to fix that. But you just kind of take it step by step and go, well, you know what? I have another one. So let me just peek into the hardware configuration of that one and see what that configuration is and see if I can just, you know, copy and paste. And let's put it back together. And luckily, we got it back in about 10 minutes and everybody was happy. The show got on the air and you at home had no clue that we were crying and pulling our eyes out and everything like that. And it it just works out sometimes like that. And a lot of times that's that's what happens um, behind the scenes. But you know what? When things like that happen, you cannot let it destroy the the whole show. You know, the producer and director didn't stand up and walk out of the room and go, well, that's it. We can't do a game. You you have to improvise at that point. You know, now your announcers are just having to, you know, announce the score more frequently or you're taking shots of the actual scoreboard to try to tell that story. You tell the story with whatever you can. If that's all you have, then that's what you have. And you can't just completely lose it. And I think, you know, that's probably one of the negative connotations of folks who have been in this industry a long time is the screaming director, right? So, you know, I, that that breed of, of television person, I think, is almost extinct now. But we've all heard stories of the guy who's just, just blasting a camera guy, just, you know, t- calling him everything but his name. Um, and, and I'm glad to know, you know, at least from my experience, that those types of environments really don't exist in this profession anymore that it is more like you say it's 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 you know we all felt like we were uh sort of imitating what tv is in the beginning until we had mentors who came alongside of us and said well you actually are making tv and it looks pretty good you know it looks great um and so i mean yeah, to tell somebody how to teach that, I think you just have to take it step by step, just like you would anything else. And you have to sort of put yourself in the mindset of I'm standing right here with this thing and here's how I'm going to take care of it. teaching to the test pattern. Hey, buddy, thank you so much for listening to episode three of my conversation with Andy Blanton from the Georgia Institute of Technology right there on North Avenue in downtown Atlanta. If you're coming I-75 South, it's their their facilities right there on the right-hand side across from the varsity. And, and little known fact, there's actually a tunnel from the varsity over to Georgia Tech that you can go under I-75, 85 through downtown Atlanta. I guess it takes a fat boy to know that one. So episode three, we talked about all kinds of good stuff. I'm really excited about uh, the, uh, the episode four coming up in just a day or so. And we're going to talk about a day in the life. And, and what Andy does that people don't know about. That's a very important thing because Andy talks about things that people just don't 
don't think about, especially when it comes to being a solid leader as Andy is. So make sure that you tune into that in a day or so right here, wherever you got this from. And like it, share it, share the podcast, tell a friend, tell that, tell that teacher friend who's considering stopping in education and going back in the industry. Tell them about the podcast and hopefully that'll keep good people in the classroom. Episode four going to come out in a couple of days. Thanks to our friends from Amatrace, A-M-I-T-R-A-C-E dot com. Go to the front page, scroll down a little bit, get everything you need to know about NDI. Great article there written by Philip Green. Until then, have a great day. And as always, let's go make some awesome. Teaching to the test pattern.